Thank you so much for joining today with Marilyn and Sarah. We are delighted to have some time with you. And partners, my little shout out to you. Thank you for helping us to cover the earth with the word and connect everyone to the heart of God. So, so powerful, so transforming, so much life. Thank you, partners. We appreciate you because every single day you help us. You help us in this mission, in this call. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for your financial support. We are very, very grateful for you. And just to give you a quick testimony, I had a friend talking to me about looking for a job. And they had been knocking on lots of doors and kept getting closed doors, closed doors, closed doors. And finally, God opened a door for them with a job that was 100% perfect perfect for their talents or gifts, abilities. Financially, it was a massive blessing. Um, and it was a real answer to prayer. So no matter what the need is in your life, hop on the phone, get on the website. Oh my goodness. God literally answers prayer, no matter what the need is in your life. And I just want to encourage you. We're going to be joining a classic teaching from my mom. One of the things I love about these classic teachings is this is Marilyn Hickey, uh, in the full, like powerful and, and back in the day, but not so much like the emphasis on back in the day or history, but more so the emphasis on what God's word says, because we know this, that God's word is timeless, no matter when or where or how long ago, but God's word does not return void. And this particular teaching, classic teaching is on attitude. Whoo, baby attitude. You're like, well, well, everybody needs help with attitude. Seriously. If you think you get in a bad attitude and all kinds of things can set us off. Sometimes it's hormones, sometimes it's experiences, sometimes it's seasons, but this classic teaching will help you come back to the word of God and ground you to have you have a healthy attitude. The teaching you are about to watch is part of the Marilyn Hickey Classic Collection. We believe the Word of God is timeless, eternal, and cannot return void. Our prayer is that this teaching will build your faith and bless your life as you grow in His Word. This morning, this sermon will tell you the way you react to it, whether you're going to be a success or a failure, even in the next 24 hours. This sermon this morning, the way you react to it, will determine whether you will be a success or failure in the next 24 years if Jesus tarries. So how many of you think this is an important sermon? This is very important. And the topic of it, and I want you to write the topic, and you're going to be taking notes, and toward the end I'm going to give you nine things that I want you to write down that are very important, and I encourage you to get the tape of this too to take it home, to listen to it, and to pass it on. But the topic is the most important asset, your attitude. You know, this morning, when you think about what you have, you know, attitude is more important than facts. There are a lot of facts around us, but your attitude could change the facts. Your attitude is more important than your past. Your attitude is more important than your education. Listen to me. Your attitude is more important than your money. Your attitude. Your attitude is more important than your circumstances. It's more important than your failures. It's more important than your successes. It's more important than what people say or think about you. Your attitude. It's the greatest asset you have, or it's the thing that can put you under. Your attitude will determine your altitude. I don't know if you did this when you were in school, but we used to have experiments in some of our biology classes. And they took fleas and put them in a bottle, put a lid on it, and these fleas would jump, they wanted to get out, and they would hit their head on the lid. And then let them do it for maybe two weeks. Then they would remove the lid, and you know, the fleas now, they could have jumped out, but they still thought they couldn't, so they didn't jump any higher than the lid. Now that's what your attitude can do to you. It can keep you in a low place when God would like you to be in a high place. Attitude is so important. You know, really, life is 10% what happens to us, but it's 90% how we react to it. So your attitude is extremely important. If it has 90% to do with your success or failure, your attitude really is everything. Your attitude ha does not have to do with your position. Your attitude has to do with your disposition. 
And so when we look at this, we're going to say, well, my success has to do with my attitude. My failure has to do with my attitude. Now, what is attitude? It's basically how you handle your feelings. So say that with me. Attitude is how I handle my feelings. So however I handle my feelings, that is what is going to determine my success or my failure. Now listen, as I'm getting ready to come here this morning, knowing I'm going to be preaching on attitude, you know, I thought, well, I'll go by and get some coffee at Einstein's on the way. So I did and spilled the coffee on my dress. Now how many of you know I wanted to get a bad attitude? Well, I thought, you better watch it. You're going to teach something you got to live. How many of you know attitude is not something you say one day, I'm going to have a good attitude for the rest of my life. Attitude is every day, every hour. So you say, what did you do? I put a jacket on. <laughs> better to put a jacket on than get a bad attitude, right? Now, listen to this. If you think, I'm just going to read you a little saying I think will be helpful to you. If you think you are beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you would like to win but think you can't, it is almost certain you won't. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or the faster man. But sooner or later, the man who wins is the man who thinks he can. And so your attitude about whether you're going to win or lose today is going to determine your future. So I want to tell you today, your attitude is the prophet of your future. So put your hand on your heart. Say, I won't forget. My attitude is the prophet of my future. Now, you know, we like to have people give us words of prophecy. And we say, well, we like people that are really God-called prophets to speak into our lives. That's wonderful. Folks, Kenneth Hagin could come here this morning, and he could prophesy over you for two hours. But if you've got a wrong attitude, it'll never come to pass. Kenneth Hagin may never prophesy over you, but if you've got a good attitude, I want to tell you, you're going to see some wonderful things happen in your future. So your attitude is absolutely the prophet of your f future. And so many times we're looking for a word, looking for a word from somebody. Honey, you got the word. You got a Bible, just cracked, uh, crack it. It is full of the word, right? All right, let's look at attitude again. Proverbs says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So the way your attitude is, is the way you're going to be. That's the way things really are. And I looked at this because I thought, what is it that God can't heal? Can God heal everything? You say, well, yeah, the Bible says he can heal everything. But you know what? God cannot heal a bad attitude. Listen to this. This is shocking to me because many times I believe this is why people don't get physically healed or emotionally healed or even spiritually healed, mentally healed, is because they have a bad attitude. Proverbs 29.1 says, he who is often rebuked and hardens his heart will be destroyed suddenly, and that without remedy. Folks, you know when we usually get a bad attitude is when somebody corrects us or rebukes us. You know, the Bible says, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. Don't faint when you're rebuked of the Lord. It says, rebuke a wise man and he'll love you. Rebuke a fool and he'll try to kill you. Folks, wise men like it. Why? because they know it can make them better. It depends on your attitude toward your, your rebuke and your correction. Now, if you have a bad attitude, the Bible says there is no remedy for you. So we see people sometimes, they come, they don't get healed, they don't get healed, they don't get healed. And I'm not saying this in every case, so please don't say that. But we see people sometimes that just have a bad attitude. Well, I'm so mad at my wife, and I hate my husband, and, you know, I went to Oral Roberts, and he didn't lay hands on me. And they tell you all the bad things and say, I just don't know why I don't get healed. Well, honey, it's not too hard to, to discern why you don't get healed. Your attitude is rotten, right? And God said there's no remedy for a rotten attitude. Why? Because you are the one that has to change the attitude. So point to yourself, say, I'm the one who has to change the attitude. So it's not God changing it. It's not people changing it. It's not your circumstances changing it. It's you making a decision, I want to change my attitude. Now think about Saul and think about David. You know, Saul got a really bad attitude. He got very, very jealous of David. He got a bad attitude toward God. He got rebellious. And, you know, start offering sacrifices when he shouldn't have done them. And Samuel came and corrected him. 
And he made excuses. Now, this is what happens often when we get rebuked or we get chastened over something. We get a bad attitude and we make excuses. Well, it's not my fault. You know, it's their fault. If, you know, if they would do this, then I would be okay. Or if my father had done such and such, then everything would have been all right. And that was exactly what Saul came up. He came up with excuses instead of repentance. Do you know what repentance means? It means change. When we repent, there's an opportunity for us to change our attitude. And he did not repent. He made excuses. He covered up. And folks, he got into witchcraft. And the Bible tells us that stubbornness is as the sin of witchcraft. What is stubbornness? It's a wrong attitude. We say, oh, well, I'm German, you know, and so I'm stubborn. And we all excuse ourselves when we get stubborn. Well, everybody's stubborn sometimes. Yeah, but does everybody do witchcraft? Do you d burn candles to idols? Do you burn incense to Buddha? What if you went calling on one of the pastors and you looked through the window and there he was burning incense to Buddha? You say, get that guy out of here. It's all right for him to be stubborn, but not all right for him to burn incense to an idol. But folks, God says it's the same. Put your hand on your heart. Say, stubbornness is a bad attitude and there's no remedy from God. I have to change. Now, Paul, uh, Saul didn't change, and he ended up being destroyed. But now let's look at David. You know, David, he could have really had a bad attitude because Saul is trying to persecute him. What has he ever done to Saul? You know, he's been good to him. He killed Philistines for him. He married his daughter. He's good to his daughter. He played the harp for him when he was under his oppression. He did everything good for him. And Saul is after him, trying to kill him, tries to kill him for nine years, 21 times. You know, David could have said, man, I'm sick of this guy. I'm going to kill him. But David kept a right attitude, and he ended up a king, and Saul ended up a suicide. Folks, attitude makes the difference. Everybody say it. Attitude makes the difference. God's Word is always relevant. We pray you were enriched by one of Marilyn's classic Bible teachings. Have you ever thought, what is holding back my miracle? You can start with a miracle attitude of, I can. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. For your gift of $25 or more, we will send you the classic DVD teaching by Marilyn, The Most Important Asset, Your Attitude. In this timeless classic teaching, Marilyn will share how a winning I can attitude is essential to gaining and sustaining success. We will also send you Marilyn's Enjoy Life book, Overcoming Hurts, Habits, and hang up CD, and her success scripture card. For your gift of $75 or more, we will also send you the Rejoice the Heart Olive Wood Anointing Oil Set. Use this oil as you pray for peace and healing over yourself, your family, and your home. Be encouraged. An I Can Attitude enables God to work through you. Call or click today for this anointed resource. That's such amazing teaching from mom. Oh my goodness, I love her classic teachings. I'm always reminded when I was growing up, you know, I was, she always sat, we'd do Bible studies or Bible stories. She always told me these Bible stories and they were always classic timeless. And even to this day, I still have them and they marinate in my heart. But you might be watching right now and, and you have needs in your life, financial needs, physical needs. Maybe you have some emotional issues that are going on. You have some family uh, relationship dynamics. We would love to pray for you no matter what the need is in your life. So hop on the phone, get on the website, give us the privilege and honor of getting to pray for you and encourage you in this faith that nothing is impossible for God in your life, even today. Folks, attitude makes the difference. Everybody say it. Attitude makes the difference. You know, I was going back to uh, Decatur, Illinois to do a crusade. And so I had to change planes in Chicago and go all the way on the other side of the Chicago airport to the F concourse, which is real hot, real crowded, and, uh, you know, uh, no air conditioning. It's, it's just, you hate to go over there because you have to get on a small plane on that side. So I'm walking over there, and how many of you know you can get an attitude? Why do I have to go over all the way over here? I've walked for 20 minutes to get over here. It's hot. It's crowded. And, you know, I just thought, Marilyn, you better straighten up and get a better attitude. Maybe God has a divine appointment for you. So it's hot. So it's crowded. Get a grip here. How many of you know sometimes you just got to say, I got to have an attitude adjustment? 
So I went in, sat down, I plugged in my computer because I thought I'll do some of my studying. So this young man next to me said to me, I've never seen a computer that small. I'd like to ask you some questions. Now, I don't want him to ask me any questions because I'm not real good with a computer. The only thing I can really do is the Bible part of it. You know, and I don't want to talk to him. Oh, I said, well, I'm glad you like it. And I thought, ditch it, man. Cool it. Bad attitude. And so then I thought, now, wait a minute. Be cool here. Maybe this, this is an appointment here. So I said to him, he said, you do the Bible on this? I said, yeah, it's really interesting. Why do you do the Bible? I said, well, I teach the Bible. And so we started talking, and he told me about his religious background. I said, you know, I prayed a prayer. I said, that totally changed my life. It is the most important prayer I ever prayed in my whole life. It changed my life. It gave me eternal life. And that one prayer is still working in my life. And you know what he said? Well, what is the prayer? You know, and so he said, because really, I'm a very good person. And he told me, you know, I was baptized as a baby. I've been confirmed. But tell me the prayer anyway. I said, well, rather than tell you the prayer, why don't you just pray the prayer? He said, go for it. And I got to lead him to the Lord. Folks, I could have missed him with a bad attitude. Attitude is everything. A man went in to get a tattoo into this Chinese shop, and he got a tattoo, and it was born to lose. But folks, putting that on his body wasn't it. He already had it in his spirit, didn't he? He had an attitude that I'm born to lose. It's inside that is so important because the inside is going to determine the outside. I read this, and it's supposed to be a true story, that a man was in a barber shop getting his hair cut, and while the man was cutting his hair, he told him, said, I'm going on a vacation, so really give me a good haircut. So the man said, well, where are you going? Well, he said, I'm going to Rome. And the man cutting his hair said, Rome? He said, I wouldn't go to Rome. That old city is so hot. It's dirty. The people aren't friendly. The food is bad. The hotels are crowded. He said, but I'm going to go to Rome, and I'm going to see the Pope. He said, the Pope, he won't see you. He only sees important people. So the man left. He went to Rome. He came home uh, several weeks later, came in to get his hair cut. So the barber said, well, did you go to Rome? He said, oh, yeah, it was wonderful. The food was good. The hotel was wonderful. The people were friendly. And I saw the Pope. You saw the Pope? Yeah. Did he say anything to you? Yeah. Said he bent down and looked at me and said, who gave you that terrible haircut? <laughs> Attitude. I tell you. Let me tell you something. The day you truly grow up is the day you take responsibility for your attitude. The day you really grow up is when you say, I am responsible for my attitude. Now, this is 1 Kings 10.8. In 1 Kings 10.8, this is the Queen of Sheba talking to King Solomon. She says, happy are your men. Happy are these your servants which stand continually before you and hear your wisdom. Now, this is her first statement when she gets there. So it's a very important statement. This is the thing she noticed first. Now, she came with four and a half million dollars to give him. She's traveled over a thousand miles in a chariot. And what does she say? Happy are the men that are around you. Happy are your staff. Oh, happy are these people that hear your wisdom. All these people that wait on you, that work for you, they are so happy. That's what she noticed first. She didn't notice the wealth first, and certainly he was the richest man on earth. So who knows how lovely his throne was or how much gold was involved or all the peacocks and the apes and everything that went on, you know, and he ate out, off of gold plates. What she noticed first was his what? Attitude. Say it again. Attitude. Say it again. Attitude. Now let me tell you, it wasn't just the servants and the staff who were happy. It was Solomon who was happy because your attitude is contagious. Your attitude is contagious. When you come in grumpy, how many of you notice people get grumpy back at you? You come in smiling, and how many of you notice people will smile back at you? You say, well, I don't understand this stupid staff and these dumb people I work with. Well, maybe you're the stupid dumb one. And you come in with such a rotten attitude, they just give back what you give to them. Folks, attitudes are contagious. 
Solomon had an attitude. Now, where did he get such a happy attitude? The Bible tells you. It was from wisdom, godly wisdom. Everybody say it, godly wisdom. Where do you find godly wisdom? You got a book full of it. 66 books full of godly wisdom, and we're reading through the Bible. Have you ever noticed when you read the Bible, you get happy? Have you ever noticed when you're depressed or discouraged, you can pick up the scriptures and start reading the scriptures, and you begin to feel better? How many of you ever had an attitude adjustment when you read the Bible? Why? Because that's the wisdom of God. And when you live in godly wisdom, you live in happiness. Now, you look at Solomon, and you say, well, yeah, sure he was happy. He was the richest man on earth. He was the wisest man on earth. Sure, he'd be happy. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's look at his family tree. It is full of nuts. It is really bad news. Because if you look at his family tree, his own father committed adultery with his mother and had her first husband murdered, Uriah. His half-brother, Absalom, had his other half-brother, Amnon, murdered. His half-brother, Absalom, wanted to kill his father, David, and got a counselor in with it, and they almost had a civil war. If you go through his background, it is the pits. He didn't let his attitude be determined by his circumstances. His attitude was determined by God's Word. Folks, we dare not let our attitude be in our circumstances, or we're going to be up and down like yo-yos. And the most important asset you have this morning, God has given you, is your attitude. And you make the choice. Point to yourself. Say, I make the choice. When we were in Decatur, we had one of the most powerful miracles, personally, I've had in my ministry. So I really questioned the woman afterwards about how, why and how and so on. This woman came to the service. She'd been in a wheelchair for nine years, over nine years, almost 10 years. And so they wheeled her in, and we had an anointing line, you know, a prayer line. And we said, bring all the wheelchair people through first. And we had maybe 1,000 people there. So she was the first one through the line. So all these people, pastors and leaders, laid hands on her. She came on through the line. We're praying for people as they come through the line. And an usher came to me and said, Marilyn, look at that woman over there. And he said, you know, the first one came through the line. So he showed me. He said, she's walking. I said, she is, isn't she? He said, look at her. She's so joyful. She's walking. So when we were through the line, I went over to the woman because people were praising the Lord and rejoicing. So I said, talk to me about how you're walking. Then she told me, I have not walked in almost 10 years. She said, I have my sena gravis, which causes the bones to decay. And she said, the bones in my left foot have totally decayed, and I have no arch in my foot. She said, look at my left foot. I have an arch, and the bones are back in my foot. I looked. I thought, dear God, this woman has a new foot. She's got new bones. So her little granddaughter is standing there, and she said, Grandma, walk up the steps. Walk up the steps. And the woman said, okay. And she walked up the steps to the platform. She said, I haven't walked up steps in 10 years because she had no bones in her foot, and God had given her new bones. So I said to her, tell me. Tell me about this. She said, well, I just said, I knew, because of your television program, that you pray for the sick. And she said, I came to this meeting and said, I'm going to get a miracle. And she said, when you said the last night that everybody would, that you'd have a prayer line, when you'd be praying for everybody, she said, I said to my daughter, I'm going to get healed. She said, I was going to buy a new wheelchair, and I was going to get a van, a special van that would lift her into the van. And she said, God said, I've got something better for you than a new wheelchair and a new van. i got a new foot for you. So she said, I said to my daughter, I'm going to get a new foot. She said, she said to her granddaughter, honey, you're going to see your grandmother walking. You're going to see your grandmother going up steps. You're going to see your grandmother dancing. God's word is always relevant. We pray you were enriched by one of Marilyn's classic Bible teachings. Have you ever thought, what is holding back my miracle? You can start with a miracle attitude of I can. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. For your gift of $25 or more, we will send you the classic DVD teaching by Marilyn, The Most Important Asset, Your Attitude. In this timeless classic teaching, Marilyn will share how a winning I Can attitude is essential to gaining and sustaining success. We will also send you Marilyn's Enjoy Life book, Overcoming Hurts, Habits, and Hang-Up CD, and her Success Scripture Card. 
for your gift of $75 or more. We will also send you the Rejoice the Heart Olive Wood Anointing Oil Set. Use this oil as you pray for peace and healing over yourself, your family, and your home. Be encouraged. An I Can Attitude enables God to work through you. Call or click today for this anointed resource. Thank you so much for watching such a classic teaching from my mom. I love it because her teachings come grounded in the word of God are timeless. And of course, again, remember, you can call anytime for prayer or get on the website for prayer. We love to pray for you. But I want to minister a verse to you as it relates to your attitude. And it's in Romans 8, verse 6. And it says, the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the spirit is life and peace. And I think that's one of the core essentials for attitude. If you don't have life and peace, if you're anxious, worried, fret, fretful, angry, that whatever, if it's not life and peace, that's a good indication that your thoughts, your mind, your attention, focus is not set on, on the spirit, on Holy Spirit. Because the mind set on the spirit is life and peace. And so I find that for myself. It's a good kind of gauge, rule of thumb, kind of a, a like Geiger counter awareness. Beep, 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 beep. You're not being set on the spirit, Sarah. Oh yeah, because I'm anxious, I'm fretful, I'm angry, I'm, you know, all that stuff. So help me please, Holy Spirit, help me to set my mind on you because I need life and peace. I want to pray for that for you right now. So Father, I pray for each person watching and I pray that you would help us to keep our mind set on Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, remind us, quicken us, give us those little jogger memory. Oh yeah, those quick reminders to keep our minds set on you. Thank you for helping us with this in Jesus name. Amen. And you know, I encourage again, any, any need you have in your life, we love to pray for you. And if you want to get the, the whole teaching, this is a great teaching from mom on attitude classic. And it's a little bit of a snippet, but you can call in and, and uh, get on the website, figure out how to get more. But really God's word is timeless and it doesn't return void, but it goes and accomplishes the what it is sent. God's Word is always relevant. We pray you were enriched by one of Maryland's classic Bible teachings. Have you ever thought, what is holding back my miracle? You can start with a miracle attitude of, I can. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. For your gift of $25 or more, we will send you the classic DVD teaching by Marilyn, the most important asset, your attitude. In this timeless classic teaching, Marilyn will share how a winning I can attitude is essential to gaining and sustaining success. We will also send you Marilyn's Enjoy Life book, Overcoming Hurts, Habits, and Hang Up CD, and her success scripture card. For your gift of $75 or more, we will also send you the Rejoice the Heart Olive Wood Anointing Oil Set. Use this oil as you pray for peace and healing over yourself, your family, and your home. Be encouraged. An I Can Attitude enables God to work through you. Call or click today for this anointed resource.